Hi, Jan Rutgers here from NewTV.com. I'm here with Jamie Wilkinson. You might not recognize him because he doesn't wear his lab coat today, and actually he doesn't wear it anymore. He used to be chief internet scientist at Rocket Boom, and he's also with Know Your Meme, the site that tracks all things meme on the internet. And uh, I thought we would talk to you today a little bit about viral videos, which you've been studying for years now for this site and, and for the show, of course, as well. And so you've been portraying a lot of videos like... Um, Recently, you had the guy who was dancing all around the world, whereas, what the hell is Matt, mm -hmm. I think, was his name. So, many people might have watched that and thought, I want to do that too. I just have to dance somewhere. I record it. I'm going to be famous. I'm going to make lots of money. How do you become famous online? Or how do you even get your vi videos to, be, to go viral? What are some of the tricks that you have learned in that? Um, it's not really like a formula. You can't really look at one thing and say, this is the reason that it broke out. But there are a lot of commonalities that we've seen across most of these videos that really blow up. And one of the most important things, I think, is this uh, feeling that you had of, oh, I could do that. I could go out and I could dance and I could be that guy. And it's kind of this feeling of being able to relate to the person. And I kind of call it like low barriers to emulation. And it's this feeling that you can sort of connect with the piece just because of how easy it seems. And that's kind of the brilliance of it, is how clever and how like they make it look easy. And that's what pros do. And um, Another thing is always just kind of like catchiness, sort of. Like that's, memes are, people always ask like, how do I make memes? And marketing companies have been asking this for hundreds of years, thousands of years. It's how do I get my idea to stick inside someone's brain? And you do it by making it catchy. And so with Where the Hell is Matt, it was like this endearing little dance and uh, the fun music and this concept of traveling all over the world. And it seemed easy and it was kind of like, these things come together and to form something that's interesting and provocative. Of course, a lot of that stuff is accidental. You said there's no formula to it. Can you even plan it? Is there, can you go viral if you want to go viral? Or is it really just something that comes over you like a lightning strike? I think that there are like things you can do to make yourself more ripe to go big. Um, I've talked with Brad O'Farrell, who was the guy who created the first keyboard cat video. He didn't create the cat video, but he was the one who created the first remix of placing a fail with the keyboard cat and having the cat play him off, which was actually the kind of the meme, was this idea of like playing somebody off. And um, he said right from the beginning he knew that it was going to go big. You know, he knew that this was like a format that people would catch on to. He loved it. He'd been looking at it for months. And I, so the first time I saw it, I said, you know, this is great. I love this, but uh, I, don't, I don't know. And so it's kind of like um, you, can, you can tell sometimes that something is like, this is just really great. And it's really going to blow up. And, I mean, sites like BuzzFeed are aces at that. Like, their ability to kind of predict when something is going to go big is really unmatched. So if something goes big, do people make lots of money with it? How do we have to think of this? Is, is viral video is becoming an internet meme? Is it stardom? Is it fame? Is it money? What's in it for, um, for us? Just the fame, I think, maybe. And that's just bleeding until the next big video has come along. Like, that's the pattern that we've seen, is that very, very few people have really been able to take their one 10 million view video and turn it into anything except like a couple of appearances on television, a Wikipedia entry, um, a website, maybe they release like a t-shirt or posters or, uh, and that's all through Zazzle, they're making maybe like a dollar a shirt. And it's very hard to go from internet famous to internet rich. And I think that's kind of like the next generation of people are going to have that problem of why bother going viral. Um, yeah, you don't have to pay for the bandwidth anymore, which is great. Like, YouTube will pay for the bandwidth. But in the end, like, what does it really do for your business? Do you know a couple of success stories that are an exception to this? Tila Tequila is the only one I can think of that really seemed to, to like, she's still in the mainstream consciousness. And um, that's because she did such a good job of crossing over into old media. She got a TV show. And um, you see that as, like, the common format, right? Like, I had a big video, Chris Crocker. Uh, Julie Allison, they kind of like tried to spin it into an old media gig where they're like working for magazines or newspapers or television. And um, that almost seems like to be the model is you use it as the internet is the minor leagues and the old media is still the major leagues. And um, a lot of companies still try it anyway as a marketing trick to get viral, to, to maybe spread memes or something like that or to, to do grassroots, like do some grassroots stuff. And, mm -hmm. and, get the kids on their sides, basically. Um, what are some of the things that they can go wrong when you do that? What are the, some of the things that you really should avoid when you try to do viral videos? That's kind of interesting. I don't know. I think nothing. I think there's almost no such thing as bad press, and that 
you could create a video mocking your company, and if people stop, like remember your brand tomorrow, you're doing better than you were the day before. Um, I'd have to get back to you, though. I'm sure there are some horror stories out there. The Microsoft photoshopping the black guy out of the ads in Poland was pretty bad, but that was accidental. Yeah. Um, one, of the, one of the interesting things about internet memes is that they often take off a life on their own, so stuff gets remixed, and people might not even remember the original anymore after some point because they've seen so many iterations of it and so many remixes, and then somebody like you has to come along and explain where it comes from. So... Um, being, being that said, um, how do you how do you how do you um, kind of attach to that meme? So how do you? I guess what I'm what I'm getting at is if your company suddenly becomes part of an internet meme, mm -hmm. how do you deal with that? Do you do you just go with the flow, or do you do you try to intervene, or do you try mm. to actually make fun of yourself as well? Or are there some good examples of companies who did it right, or some companies who did it wrong? I was actually kind of first-hand involved in this project in Berlin uh, at the Transmediale Art Festival. I kind of, uh, in my free time, work with the Free Art and Technology Lab. And we created a fake Google Street View car, and we drove all over Berlin, like, you know, portraying the evils of Google and spreading the word about Google Street View invading people's privacy and things like that. And Google actually did an amazing job of handling something like this. Like, this could have been... It's got all over all the blogs. It was in a lot of mainstream press. And they could have made public statements saying this was a fake car, this was all these things. But what they did was they emailed the blogs individually and privately and explained to them that it wasn't actually a Google product. And so they did like this very, very quiet, behind the scenes damage control. And um, to me, that was kind of like the model of trying to do, like to repair a, a bad, situ bad press situation. But, for the most part, people should probably just stay out of it. They're going to mess it up. Um, people are smarter than you are, probably, most of the time. All right. I think that's a great last word. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you.